on today's Techno Babble, asking questions in troubleshooting. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of Techno Babble. This is the show where every week I help you with church video and graphic design. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host, and I'd love for you to ask your question, so just do that below the video. That's cool. Um, if you're listening to the audio, by the way, this show has been going on, well, since 2005, so there are people still listening from way back when, when it was just audio. That's okay. Just go to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash TNB and leave your question there. That's a great way to do it as well. So I was thinking um, about troubleshooting in light of uh, an experience that happened to me not long ago. Someone was having a problem, and without thinking, I just asked a question. Now, you really need to think about the power of questions. Questions can really influence the way things are going. So one good example of this is in the movie The Matrix. Uh, Trinity, uh, not the name of this company the, that I work for. Uh, Trinity, n not my daughter either. Not that Trinity. Trinity, again, not the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But the character in this movie, The Matrix, is talking to Neo and asks, so basically she says, it's the question that drives us. Do you know the question, Neo? Well, while it goes into some interesting things from there, that's a great thing to remember. Do you know the question? So let me start off by talking about the question that you should start off your troubleshooting with because it'll influence everything else. And that is, what's it doing or not doing? Now let's break that down. What's it doing? If something is broken, it is doing something it's not supposed to. Magic smoke is coming out of it. I don't think that LED is supposed to blink, etc. It's doing something it's not supposed to. Or, the opposite. It's not doing something it is supposed to do. There is no LED on the front anymore. It used to put out video. The audio used to sound good, but now it sounds distorted. See? What's it doing or not doing? Just by asking that question, you eliminate a bunch of stuff that could be wrong. If they if you ask, what's it doing or not doing, and they say, well, the LED is blinking, you've automatically eliminated that this should be plugged into power, but it's not plugged into power. So you've eliminated that problem, unless it's got a battery backup, but depending on the piece, that's what you've done. So now, troubleshooting sometimes can be like a game of guess who. So. If you're familiar with this game, I was actually pretty good at it, and the reason is I knew how to ask questions. So as you're troubleshooting, you can ask questions to eliminate problems. So you want to eliminate the biggest things first. So let's say that you're troubleshooting a car, for example. What's it do or not do? Well, it doesn't drive anymore. Okay. Does it turn on? Yes. Okay, that takes you a totally different direction than no, it doesn't. So you've just eliminated half the possible problems. So you can narrow it down from there. And that's why questions are so important. Now, it could be that you're troubleshooting with someone over the phone, over Skype, etc. But it could be that you're asking yourself these questions. Okay, if this is true, what does that mean? So troubleshooting becomes kind of a logic game. I don't know if you're familiar with logic games, but you're probably familiar with one in particular, and that is one that used to come with Microsoft Windows. 
Minesweeper. Minesweeper is a classic example of a logic game. You start off by clicking a few places. That's random. That's unforeseen. But once you do, you see numbers. A one means that there is a mine touching the number one in one of the one, two, three, four, one of the eight possible areas. So it could be touching a corner, it could be touching a side, top, bottom, etc. So there are four possible places where there's a mine. Well, when you combine one number with another number adjacent to it, you start to see a pattern. If there's a one here, 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 and right here, that's not touching anything else other than the one, then it has to be the one uh, catty corner. So it's a logic game. Troubleshooting is a logic game. You have to think, okay, when I'm formulating my hypothesis about what's wrong, what does that automatically say that I'm not stating? So going back to the power example, if I think, okay, there's something wrong with the power, that can uh, illustrate or that can tell me a little bit more about other things. So if I'm not getting enough power, I might still see something. I might still see some indication. But if I'm getting no power, I shouldn't see anything. So if I do, that's wrong. So a logic game is putting together disparate pieces to form something that absolutely makes sense. It's kind of like uh, what Sherlock Holmes used to say, that you eliminate the impossible, and whatever remains, however improbable, is the solution. So you eliminate the impossible. You combine facts that you know to eliminate the impossible. So that's what questions do. They are a great tool in troubleshooting, they're a great tool in life, and they will enable you to figure out what is going wrong in your situation. Well, I hope that helped you. I hope that now you're thinking, okay, what questions haven't I been asking that aren't giving me the appropriate information I need to combine to form my hypothesis. If you like this content, you'd probably like my email newsletter, so by all means, head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S, and there you can pick up a church tech gift of your choosing. Also, head over to my store, trinitydigitalmedia.com slash store, where I've got all kinds of great stuff, but if you if you're more of an all-you-can-eat kind of person, then what you want to go directly to is Church Tech U. So the Church Tech U description, uh, the product is available on the store, and it will enable you to basically subscribe and get all my uh, content and all the stuff that's available for one low monthly price. And what I haven't mentioned a lot is the first month's free. So you can go in, download stuff, make use of it, and see if it's right for you. If it's not, cancel. If it is, then just continue on. I think you'll find that there's more content than you'll have time to use in a month. So uh, that's something that I think would be a great benefit for you, the church techie. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. Go out and change eternity. <music>